Good morning and welcome to Garden Devotions. Today we're going to talk about the world's oldest profession. I know many of you may be wondering why I'm doing a video on that, but it's because the world's oldest profession is really gardening, farming, because that's what God set Adam and Eve in the garden for. He gave them a chance to garden, to t tend to the plants that he had created, and that's what we have. So when people talk about the world's oldest profession, they're actually not talking about the real oldest profession, because this is what we're, we're created to enjoy God's beauty, the creation that he made for us. Today we're going to take just a little tour of the garden and see how it's doing. Uh, the grape leaves, as you can see, are starting to open really well. And I'm very, it's very exciting to see that. I love the way they come out a little bit red. This is my second year with the grapevine. I planted it uh, last year. And so this is all new to me. I haven't really worked with grapes before. Although my parents had grapes when we grew up, I just never took care of them because that was someone else's job in our family. I never really, when I was a kid, we had a huge garden because I didn't know that we were poor, but that was how mom fed us. She did a lot of canning. She had um, mostly green beans and corn and we had many meals where it was totally just vegetables from the garden. Uh, corn and green beans for lunch. Yep, that's it. And a salad on the side. <laughs> and maybe some watermelon for, for dessert. So we, we had ate off the garden a lot. But again, I didn't know it because I was so little. I didn't really understand it. And I didn't really understand the whole art of gardening until I was, well, until a few years ago, really. And then I started to see how it all plays together in God's plan. And it's so wonderfully, intricately interwoven. So there's the grapes. And we're going to take a little walk and see what else there is to go. It's been a nice couple warm days, a few warm days here in a row. So things are kind of starting to pop. There's a little red Russian kale starting to come up. That'll be an exciting color in my salads and in my greens. I always like having lots of color and the kale is definitely high, high nutrition as well as, you know, just delicious to eat. So I'm excited to see that coming up. Here are the peas I planted on uh, April 2nd, and today is the 25th. It, it takes me a while to get things done, and so I'm trying to do a lot of videos ahead of time, so I'll be ahead. Um, I tend with chronic fatigue to have periods of time where I'm relatively inactive, and kind of this past week was it, but um, I, I just can't do very much at all, and so this is... Like I said, I'm trying to get a bunch of videos ahead of time, so when I start uploading them, then I can have bad days and not really add another one if I need to. But here we are, and they are started, they're starting to grow, and they're putting out their tendrils. I did put a cage up on top. I've had them in the raised bed. They grow fine in the raised bed, but, you know, I... And I had sticks that I used to hold them up. But, um, sorry about the extra noise. My neighbors, I don't know, doing something. But uh, I'm doing the cages this year. And I'm going to see how it works putting in the, the containers. Now, one thing, if you use containers, you'll notice that the soil looks a little dry here. So I probably will water my plants. I usually water them at least once or twice a day in the containers because containers don't... Um, 
hold the moisture very well. And that's that's one drawback to them. Oh, look at this. You got one strawberries. I, I definitely need to get these dandelions out, but I hate to do anything that's going to disrupt the strawberries. You know, and dandelions just kind of take over, so I'm really going to have to work on that. This container isn't quite growing as well, not as full, but I did plant a few extra seeds in there. Um, I think it was last week. So maybe it'll fill in a little bit. I, I really love peas. These are um, sugar snap peas, so you can eat the pod and everything. I'm, I'm excited to have some coming on there. So. Oh, and with the blocks, the cement blocks, I have ringing the entire garden. My original intention was to plant them all, and I have planted some things in them. I, I wanted, really, the strawberries to be in those blocks so they'd be really really easy to harvest however strawberries have a mind of their own and they didn't like the blocks this one this one did um, he was transplanted there last year but I, I have bulbs that I planted bulbs in here this year and so I don't know when they'll if they'll come up I hope they do uh, I Part of the problem with doing that then is that it makes the beds a little harder to work with, like the the containers that over towards the side. So I've really started putting the containers up on top. I think it's actually a little deterrent to the rabbits. Not you know, it's a little higher for the rabbits, so they don't get in there as much. And uh, but they they don't bother the containers horribly. But you know, with some things. I'm sure they will because they really, really love kohlrabi and those kinds of things, the brassicas. Okay, over here I brought back from, uh, just a minute, let me stop and get up and move. Okay, here you can see that I've brought back my four containers from my dad's greenhouse because now it's, I think the lowest it's supposed to get is like 44, maybe 42. But they should be able to weather that, even though they're not going to be happy about it, but they still will. I've got some cucumbers going in this first one. In the second one, I have pumpkins. And, let's see, cucumbers, pumpkins. Uh, over here, the next one is either watermelon or squash, and then the final one is the other one. one one's a small squash. Uh, Small Wonders from Burpee, uh, I think it was. Or possibly, no, that may have been from Park Seeds. I don't remember. But anyway, so they're, they're growing. They're, they're going to start getting tall enough that they need the cages now. So I've got the cages on them. I do need more cages if I'm going to grow more viney things. And I decided to leave the fence in because... It just gives them more room to vine on and like pumpkins and the watermelon things do vine you're probably wondering how it works with the fruit well the watermelon are small the small snack pack size so they they come out the size of a, a little bit bigger than a softball but they're very good which is perfect for me because I live by myself and one of them I can eat one of them for for lunch so that's that works out really well for me. You know, when I get a great big watermelon, I just can't eat it all. And usually part of it goes bad. Um, although I have a dehumid uh, dehydrator now, and I'm planning on dehydrating some watermelon this summer. So that's going to be interesting. I've never done that before, and I doubt if there's a lot less, but they say it comes out very tasty. So I'm going to try that. Now, I do have a lot of weeds in the ones on the other side. And um, with the containers on the blocks, I'm going to actually uh, spread them apart. I'm going to have them like every other place uh, so that I have more room to be able to get in and work with the, and, and harvest the squash or, uh, because I need some zucchini going. My zucchini, I planted some in my seed tray. They just didn't come out. Um, they're, they're, they still didn't come up, so I think I probably will just get some zucchini plants and plant those. 
Um, the peppers are starting to come up in there. They're very tiny, so I'll probably have a couple of peppers. I have one that's a bell, sweet bell, and then I have um, a Hungarian pepper, which I've never had before, but it's supposed to be hot. So I plan on uh, dehydrating those and then crushing them and using them uh, for seasoning. Because I like hot things, just I, I'm not real fond of eating peppers by themselves. Uh, cooked peppers I'll, I'll eat, just not the raw ones. So this is a, a onion from last year. I'll get it out of the way here so you don't get my shadow. Uh, this is an onion that came up from last year. I guess I didn't harvest it. Two onions, actually. So they're getting up there. They'll be ready to harvest pretty soon. Which is kind of nice. I actually I need to plant some onions because I like the the onions from seeds, not the the you know I I know the sets the onion sets are faster, but I really like the seeds because they come up as nice green onions, and so they're not as strong a flavor, which uh, works for me. So let's go see what some of the other things are. This is my next set of uh, snap peas that I planted. Um, planted these a couple of weeks later so I would have them staggered a little bit. This one's in a smaller container. I think it's probably about a three gallon container. You know, you can't really tell with the cat food or the cat litter. It was 27 pounds of cat litter. Whatever that translates to in gallons. But I think it's probably about a three gallon and then the ones over here are about five gallons. Somewhere in that general vicinity. And, uh, they they seem to be doing okay. I kind of put them in both, partly because that's what I had available, but it's also kind of an experiment for me to see if they do better. I don't think peas need a lot of depth. You know, they don't have really long roots, so I don't think that's going to be an issue being in the smaller containers. You know, some things I don't put in smaller containers, like corn. I will not put my corn in smaller containers because, yes, I grow corn in containers. Uh, because they they just it's a balance issue with the corn they don't really have deep roots but they do have tall stalks and so the the larger the container it's a little heavier and it keeps them from blowing over so uh, the snap peas are, are are growing and this way I'll have a little staggered harvest you can see here there's a let's get rid of him he's not what we want in here This one, we can get rid of. I'll let the rest grow. There, there's little grass-like things, but I'm not going to worry about those at this point. Okay, let's move over to the mustard greens. We have some of them, and I don't know, for some weird reason, it seems like they concentrated here and they concentrated there. The rest is probably little grasses. I'll take care of those later. This is lots of little grasses. But I do have a couple of nice little, contrary to what it says, I know it says celery, but I got that mixed up with the cauliflower. So these are a violet cauliflower, very pretty, Sicilian violet, I believe it's called. And they're, they're very pretty. They, they taste just like a regular cauliflower, but they, they're beautiful, and I love taking pictures of pretty plants. See, lots and lots of these. Okay, this is a weed too. All right, this is my dill, or I'm um, sorry, my celery coming up. And I did plant it pretty thick just because celery, my seeds are a little old. So I, tended, I tend to plant things a little thick and then I can thin them out as, I'm, as needed. I love fresh celery. And what I really love about it is I don't, I only cut off what I need and it keeps growing. So again, for somebody who lives by themselves, who doesn't have a lot of energy, just being able to cut off a stalk or two when I need it is really handy and very nice. So, over here we have the dill. Um, starting to come up, but there's so much that's grass in there too and weeds. And I really just have to let it get bigger before I can do anything with it. Uh, I, you know, I just don't want to pull up something I'm not supposed to. And, they're all too close to each other and so yeah I'm gonna wait on that over here is supposed to be Brussels sprouts I really 
don't think the Brussels sprouts are taking. I, nothing in here looks like Brussels sprouts to me. So, I uh, probably will end up getting some Brussels sprout plants. I love baby Brussels sprouts. I'll tell you what, when they come off the vine, they are so sweet. I mean, when you get them in the store, if you if you turn up your nose at Brussels sprouts, you need to get some that are fresh off, off the stalk and are, are small baby ones because they are so totally better than the big, great big ones that you get in the store, really. <laughs> Seriously, they are so much better. Okay, over here is bok choy. And as you can see, a lot of it is growing up, but again, they clustered a little bit. Part of that is because of when you put the water in, it tends to wash the little tiny seeds like these, and they tend to cluster, which is why in the bigger containers with the squash and things, I have a, a small plastic uh, container in the middle so I can water through that, and then it w doesn't wash the seeds around. Now, we've got some beets in here, but we've got a lot of weeds too. So, we'll, again, when they get a little bigger, we'll see what we can do with it. Okay. Um, got some asparagus coming up over here. And, I don't know, I think I'm going to wait to harvest it. Oh, there's one there that's really big. It's kind of nice. I've been having asparagus for breakfast every morning. Raw asparagus. I mean, really, when it's growing up at this stage, it is so sweet. <clears throat> it's really good. This is a goji berry bush. I got it from Lowe's and I don't know. It was looking a little peaked last night, but I think maybe it was just thirsty. Again, containers containers just need a lot of water and they can get very dry very fast. So he he looks a little better today. We'll see. I don't know. I it's supposed to be okay for this climate. And I've never actually had goji berries, so we're going to see. This is all a, a test. We'll find out what it tastes like, I guess. Okay. I'm, I'm working on, um, I think I'm going to put morning glories on my, my mm, arch, I guess that's what I'll call it, the arch, because the arch is new this year and actually knew this past week. <laughs> I just got the arch in. My dad and my brother gave it, or brought it for me. They bent it for me and they, they brought it in and they put it in and it fit just perfect. It was, it was great. I mean, it's exactly what I wanted. So I'm thinking maybe on this side, you know, I'll have the grapes on the other side. I figure once the grapes get around to this side, I can train them to go back up <laughs> and over again. So pretty much the grape is gonna take over. But I really think I'm going to put um, some morning glories around this this thinner part here because I don't need this is going to be something that I, I can't have grapes through because it's so small um, so yeah I think I'm gonna try it I probably will be pulling out my hair because morning glories tend to be a little like weeds but yeah so that's what I'm doing this this year And here we have the raised bed. The lettuce is growing. I love the different colors. When I have a salad, I really love having different colors in there. This is the kohlrabi. Again, you, if you haven't watched my other videos, you'll know how much I love kohlrabi. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff. And so they're like gold. And I don't know, for some reason, this particular row didn't do very well has a few down here, but nothing down here. Uh, some carrots are starting to come up along the side, and there's some weeds next to them. I think I'm gonna wait on pulling up those weeds. I usually try to get them out, but boy, I don't wanna pull up little, any little plants at this point. But those weeds are really annoying, and they, they're everywhere, they're always everywhere. So I try to get rid of them as fast as I can, and when they're the small, they're really easy to pick up. So. But yeah, the kohlrabi is really growing. I'm so excited. The the mesh here is the chicken wire in the the PVC pipe holding it, and then we have zip ties putting it together. 
and then I have a brick over there to hold it just so the rabbits can't get through. Now, when they measured to make the bed, they, they made this actually a little small, but I'm kind of glad they did. Pardon the train. Uh, I'm kind of glad they did because <clears throat> it does get a little unwieldy for it. this bigger one over here. It's a little unwieldy for me. I'm going to go to Lowe's <clears throat> and get some PVC pipe to put in the corner here and then put a Y on top of it so when I can set this, this up on top of it so I can get in there. Right now, I have to take it all the way off to get in there to work and it's really just not very handy. So we didn't need anything on top because there's not, it, it, we just put the, the chicken wire up like this, which made it easier to make it, and uh, we didn't need anything on top because it's not like I'm worried about birds going down and eating them. I'm worried about rabbits. And we have lots of rabbits, especially Barrington, which I haven't seen yet today. So, And there's my onions. So that's it for now. I thank you for stopping by my garden and having a little garden devotions with me this morning. Thanks. If you like this, please like and subscribe. Thanks.